This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. Still in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. Haven't made that ship to uh, Toronto yet, and uh, things have kind of stalled me in that direction, but that's okay. I'm still in Fredericton, uh, the unknown province of Canada, <laughs> the parts unknown province. But I am here on July 7th, and, uh, you know... Today, uh, or tomorrow on July 8th, I turn 51. And I remember last year, before I turned 50, Jeffrey Mark uh, had interviewed me. And of course, anybody who's watched my show a long time, Jeffrey Mark has um, done tribute interviews with me uh, uh, amongst a, a lot of uh, performers he was connected with, including Lucille Ball, Ella Fitzgerald, Mary Tyler Moore, Steve Allen, Milton Berle, and Don Wells, uh, many of those whom he knew on a personal friendship basis. And uh, I've interviewed him three times by himself of his own career, so I had him interview me last year. Well, this year, I have decided for my 51st to do this again, and this time I'm going to have somebody who is – become a very close friend of mine out of California. She's been on the show four times uh, by herself, once with a friend of hers last year, friend Melissa Bentley. And uh, now she's coming on. She's going to interview me. I'm talking about Nancy McLaughlin of Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Liz. My background is probably not going to show that, but I got the Blu-ray out of the box set here that's got – CJ Graham's signature on it, uh, 18 kills. I have not, I've yet to get him on the show here. And Tom Matthews, uh, who I've had on here three times, I met him last year at Horror Rama and Frightmare in the Falls. He's got one kill, but I had to approach him about that because uh, Jennifer Cook technically did the kill shot. <laughs> but, oh, well, we'll give it to Tom. But here is the little medallion that I have with me, courtesy of Nancy McLaughlin, her initials right on the back here. Thank you so much, Nancy, for agreeing to interview me for my upcoming 51st birthday. And I'm doing a little toast with... Uh, well, my friend Amy Dunn, who where I worked with at the hospital, is uh, on a side thing online. She does a company called Pharmacy. That's with an F. And she sells men and women's products, including uh, this nice little shake drink, which is a strawberry. So uh, you can contact Amy Dunn for that. That's A-I-M-E-E-D-U-N-N, -E -E Amy Dunn. And uh, the products work because she did the makeup stuff right on my Zoom and uh, gave her quite a transformation. So check that out. But enough of the promoting. I am ready. I can't wait to hear what Nancy McLaughlin is going to ask me. She looks lovely with that red hair. Nancy, thanks for coming on here today. I am having a problem. I can't see you. I have a whole thing. I want to get rid of it so I can see you. Well, I can see you and I can hear you, so I think we're kind of fine. But <laughs> hey, me. I want to see your face when I ask you these questions. I love that I was asked. Thank you, Greg. I am very honored. Mm -hmm. And I like putting you on the hot seat. Yeah. I like that. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I really can't stand that I can't see it. It says, this meeting is being recorded. The account owner yep. can watch this, of course. Recording is stored in the iCloud. Participants granted permission can record and share their recording with apps and others. But why is that there? I just want it gone. Of course you can do that. I don't know, what? but I can see you. and and Lucky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so first question, young man. Mm hmm. 51. How does that feel? You know what? It's funny. I, I hear people talk about getting older and getting older, you know, and uh, people worrying about hitting 40. And and, uh, you know, I'll be frank. I never really started living my life like really exciting until uh, I was in my 40s, you know. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not I'm not saying my previous years were dull. I'm saying that um, when I started doing the podcast, things really opened up for me because um, that led. Well, I never thought in a million years I would be interviewing people from movies I grew up with, you know, or movies even around now, you know, I never thought that would ever happen, but it didn't stop there. Now I'm doing the conventions, you know, I'm about to do my third Frightmare in the Falls this, this fall, and I've done four Horroramas, I've done one Toronto Comic Con. And uh, thanks to Lisa Langwa inviting me my first one, I stepped onto a plane for my first time. That's uh, so cool. I experienced Man. the subways, all that stuff, and stuff branched out. Things are kind of exciting that way. May I ask you a question? Sure. When did you get the passion for what you do? You know what? That goes back a long way because – I had an uncle that owned a video store from 1981 to 1988. And of course, um, I have a lot of memories from that store. And when he closed that up to go uh, make Reeves, Christmas Reeves, and that he's done very, very well with that, much better than he did at the video store because he can go to Florida every year. But uh, I always loved going to the movies, always loved going to the drive-in. We don't have them here anymore, haven't since the mid-80s. But I started reviewing movies in 1996. Wow. Because, yeah, because um, I used to love writing fictional stories, but I was always ripping off what I was watching. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I That's... thought, well, if I'm going to rip it off, I might as well review them. And I started reviewing movies, and I did that. I saw almost every movie released here since 1996 – not every movie now, but yeah. there was a period there where I see everything. Now I go about once a week, you know, and and see something. But I love going to the movies. And in 2005, uh, my best friend here, Colin, had uh, suggested I go to CHSR, which is a campus radio station here, because they, unlike the traditional radio station – they have students and people come in and they do a variety of different shows. You know, you get somebody that plays classical music. You get somebody that does a, it's a blues show. You have somebody that does a crazy train show, which is a, is a heavy metal show. You've got um, people that do a wrestling show on there. Uh, Aaron, uh, who was a station manager, she's now program director. She does the, uh, a book club show on there, plus a couple of other shows. She's very busy on there. And uh, when I approached on there, um, I remember a woman named Melissa was the program director at the time, and she said they don't have a film critic. So I went down there, showed my credentials. and that uh, started. Yeah, so I got down there, got on the radio, and I had a whole lot of reviews. And that's what it was for 10 years me reading film reviews and playing music you know and uh i yeah i almost always open my show with the avril lavigne song together off her second album and then i would uh read off some reviews and play some clips and this and that it wasn't till 2015 when uh a former colleague of mine uh had a contact info through i think riff tracks to interview tommy wiseau uh -huh. And yeah, and the problem is he had. Do you see my uh, little dog struggling to be yeah, by I, me? Uh, yeah, I see that. Um, it's so ridiculous. Giddles is I'm... staying out of the picture right now. He's over there asleep. But, yes. but it, it, here's the thing. I asked my colleague, I said, how are you going to do this? I said, are you just going to talk to Tommy Wiseau on the phone? I said, let's do this at the radio station and record it. Exactly. And so uh, Tommy Wiseau of The Room became my first interview on Python's Paradise. And uh, after that, it was like, who else can I do this with? And then my mind went right back to that video store. And I thought immediately of the Friday the 13th franchise. And I, I remember I had a crush on Adrian King from the first one. And um, 
you know, Lisa Langwa from Class of 1984. Uh, was that was a movie I saw from that place, and so many others. And mm-hmm. I reached out to those two first, and I remember it was a long weekend in May, and I heard back from Adrian King. And I remember I was at uh, my brother's apartment. I think it was on a Saturday, I believe, and um, I saw the response from her. And I just kind of leaned on back in my chair and said, she said, yes, she said, yes, because if it was just Tommy Wiseau, one and done would have been fine. I would have interviewed Tommy Wiseau, you know, this amazing uh, individual. But Adrian said, yes. And I was so nervous. And I was like, wow, I got to talk to this woman. And um So it's just a huge passion. I wonder in your real life. Well, the thing is, uh, Lisa eventually got back to me. And I had her on in June that year. And uh, of course, that turned into a real big friendship because she invited me out of my comfort zone here, you know. And I would not, I'm going to say this right now, I would not be, I'd be still just sitting here doing interviews on the phone probably at the station had it not been for lisa telling me to come and assist her at horrorama and really you're the one that suggested zoom to me so i probably wouldn't be doing this if you not suggested it thank you thank you i remember and you kept saying no and i kept saying no you need to because well, Carrie really- Yates, Carrie Yates got me set up for it. She's out of the UK and was involved with 13 Fanboy, but um, she, Carrie Yates got me connected. I love she, that. Yeah, because I had no idea what I was it doing. But My- I, sorry, I, I interrupted you. What did you say? Yes, you did. Yeah. I wish I could, I could see you. I'd have more physical cues. It's uh-huh. hard. Anyway, um. I want to know in your in your real life, not online, how because you present so friendly, warm out there. Are you just do you just go up to people? Are you just uh, a very outgoing person? Or are you a more shy person? I wouldn't say I'm shy. I'm very remote. Uh, when it comes to work, I prefer to work by myself because uh as I, I won't go into it, but as I found out, working with people can be toxic and problematic. Yeah. Um, but um, I work as a cleaner. That's what I do for money. And uh, sometimes it's just nice to go in someplace by yourself, put your headphones in, uh, get lost in a podcast or lost in whatever it is you're listening to. Uh, I listen to a lot of the cinema snob. I, I like him, so I listen to a lot of that. But um I'll listen to something and get lost in it and uh, just do my work, you know? And um, if I were to walk down the street, mm -hmm. would you say hello? You know what? I probably would. Uh, I've, I've said hello to people, random people as I see them. Yeah. So you, you do strike up conversations. I'm just curious because you seem more of a loner to me. That's what I see. I see a, a much more introverted person who has a lot to share. And I love the way you interview people. I think mm-hmm. you're you a lot of care. And I think you're a very good listener, which I think is an incredible too bad, you, too bad you can't see me because Skittles is up here right now. <laughs> oh, this is not fair. I want to close this and come back in. Can you no, see? No, you can't. You can't you can't close it while Skittles is here. Hi well, Skittles. <laughs> These Skittles. I've heard of this amazing Skittles. Yeah. It's, Hi Kitty. <laughs> Did, He's my buddy. Can you see her? <laughs> yeah. You can see her? You can how oh, far yeah. can you see them? Can you see Doug? No, I uh, can't see them right now. Mm. I can see you though. But yeah, it's Skittles. Skittles is keeping me from getting to Toronto. I know she is. I yeah. keep calling him a she. He's I don't my know buddy. why. He's my yeah. buddy. Yeah, he knows I love him. He and knows he's... <laughs> he'll do anything for him because honestly, I'd get my butt to Toronto. 
But when you have challenges and you love people, you can't. We're animals. I understand. Mm. And if I lived in Toronto, I'd accept Skittles. Yeah. This is, in New Brunswick, you have real lobsters, correct? Yep. And they're really delicious. Mm -hmm. Do you have some good restaurants with lobsters? I wonder, do we still have the lobster out here? We might. Oh, you have to. Well, here's You're the thing. I, I don't do a lot of big fine dining here, you know? Usually if I go out to a big, it's usually uh, Boston pizza, you know? Because. Um, no, I don't know. I've never heard of it. Yeah, but wow. Good question. We do have a lot. I know we got places that have lobster. That I do know. I but... want to know how much your lobsters are our lobsters are so expensive because they're all from back east <laughs> oh wow not surprised <laughs> yep favorite food mine oh mm -hmm. you know what when i was younger i would have said pizza now i say fruit salad with yogurt dip that's good. It's not my favorite food. Yeah. That's for darn. Oh yeah, I I love fruit salad with you know pineapple and and grapes, watermelon, honeydew, cantaloupe, strawberries, uh, cherries, the whole nine yards. And I just you make it yourself. No, I usually I'll buy it, uh -huh. and uh, you know, and um, like when I worked uh, overnights, uh, uh, when I worked uh, at the hospital, when I worked overnights, I would bring. Uh, a bag of um, frozen uh, fruit and it would thaw out by the time I had lunch and I would have some yogurt I would put on it and that, mm -hmm. that would be what I would eat. Yeah, I love that. That would probably be my favorite food is uh, as a uh, fruit salad. Have you ever had a delicious steamed lobster with a clarified butter? I probably have when I was younger. It's been, it would have been a long time. Is lobster your favorite food? What do you think? Mm. I'm thinking about it so much. Mm. Ridiculous. What is your favorite meat? Meat? Wow. Uh, Eat meat. Meat. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a vegetarian. I know a lot of people that are, but Wow, what kind of meat do I like best? <laughs> These are good questions. We need to know you. Well, normally if I if I have pizza, I usually will have bacon as a top meat. But you know what? When it comes to probably chicken, I like chicken. But I'm I'm fish. Fish is great. I love fish yep. and chips. Fish mm. and chips with tartar sauce. And where do you get that? Do you do you cook at all? No, I use microwave. <laughs> that counts. It counts. Skittles. Uh, Skittles cooks for me, don't you, Skittles? He said he's if, thinking. He's thinking about it. <laughs> I wish I Skittles. It's not fair. I should be able to see. Um, can you see the sunflowers in the back? I can. Those are all volunteers from mm -hmm. last years. Before. There were. I didn't plant them. I didn't seed them. And they're 15 feet high. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? I love volunteers. Um, do you garden at all? No. My nephew does, though. My nephew loves doing stuff like that. My older brother did, for, uh, too. Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time, but but uh, he was big into gardening. They had green thumbs. But I know my nephew is uh, heavily into He's working on a farm right now. Uh, with his son, so uh, he's heavily yep. into that. Yep. I love that. What is your favorite activity to do when you're not interviewing someone and you're not working? You know what I like to do? Hmm. I like I like to watch movies. I'll either I like going to the theater, 
and sit, sit in a darkened theater, especially the, when I'm in Toronto, it's nice to go to the theaters there. But it's nice to go into a theater and just get lost in a movie. And if I'm home here, especially mm -hmm. um, if I get back from an overnight at work before settling into bed, I just love to put a movie in and just get lost in it. Now, one thing I do do, I try to do every night if I can, unless it's raining, I like to go for a walk. I Good. usually will go for like an hour walk. I don't run or jog. I like to put, you know, my headphones in and listen to something as I'm walking and just in, I don't run or jog and I'm not against anybody that does it. It's just, I don't want to tire myself out doing it. I just want to walk, breathe in the air and just listen to whatever I'm listening to and just enjoy my surroundings. And um, I'm a big night walker, you know. Because it's nice and quiet. You don't have all the commotion, you know. And uh, so I'm usually gone anywhere from one to two hours, usually in between that, something like that. And just uh, I find a nice big, long podcast to listen to as I'm doing it. But now I come back here, I get a nice warm shower or a nice hot shower, I should say. And I'll settle in and I'll watch a, a movie. I, I do love watching movies. And when did you start? Like you say overnight. Is mm -hmm. that favorite? Have, since childhood, have you always been a person that preferred nights to days? You know, it's interesting in our family. Hmm. Mom and dad were always country people. My brothers and I were always rock people. My parents were country people. I don't know about my older brother, but my younger brother and I are very much city people. And especially with Toronto, I'm definitely a big city person. Um, I love the neon. I love the lights, you know. Um, but I find uh, when it comes to night and day, I just find there's so much commotion out there, especially in the afternoon. I love the quiet I love to um I I I find if I'm I'm at nights I'm not bothered as much. Um I just get skittles and I can just even working, you know, it's nice and quiet. Um you know, uh, even if you're working with other people, uh like at mm -hmm. the hospital for example, you know, it'd be nice and dark. All the patients would be asleep, you know, and or for the most part. And uh, that I like, unless you're in the ER section, that can be uh, chaotic, you know, but, but, um, but I find for me, I like doing stuff at nights because it's just, there's another thing too, especially on a cold winter day, especially if it's snowing, it's kind of nice to leave work in the morning everybody else is rushing to get their coffee and their fix to go to work i'm gonna come back i'm gonna hear the wind the wind whistle outside because of the cold i'm gonna get a nice hot shower and i'm gonna crawl into bed and i'm just people say how can you sleep during the day i got kids the family running around up above me you know i don't know i seem to sleep through it you know and i don't bother them they don't bother me and um, I don't know. Uh, to me, I just, I just love it. I love that scene at the beginning of Breakfast at Tiffany's when you got uh, Audrey Hepburn. Oh, I guess I'm assuming the early mornings, you know, eating a bagel and looking in the Tiffany's window, and then she goes home. And I'm assuming she just went was out in the early morning and went home and slap. And there's just something about that that appeals to me. Now, my folks were very much get up in the day. If you sleep during the day, your day's gone. Well, to me, I if I go to the movies, I go at night. If I uh, I go at night, and if I'm going, I don't know. I just I like to avoid all the chaos. I get it. It's mm -hmm. part of your loner thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're uniquely different in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> uniquely different. Yeah. Uh, I had a question. Uh, you tripped a question in my brain and I'm trying so hard to, you are very fascinating. 
Mm-hmm. Kindness and love of people come from when you are such a loner. You know, it's interesting because uh, my previous job didn't seem to appreciate that. I won't get into that, but because I'll tell you one thing about that particular situation. I did an 18 hour shift. Yeah. I did uh, a lot of doubles. Yeah. We, I remember there'd be three day weekends where, and it was always the same number, 17, always 17 people calling in sick on the three day weekend. Wow. How huh? coincidence. I get done an overnight and, um, Oh, my poor supervisor. I remember one morning she was sitting there listening to these messages on the phone. Wow. And and um, she just looked like her head she, – she, her head was sinking. And I said to her, I said, would you like me to stay on? And she said, would you? And I said, yes. That's funny. I would get terminated from that job. Go figure, you know. But nonetheless, I found out, yeah, I'm just a number. But here's the thing. I went into that job every day to try to make the job easier for other people. But the problem is when you're working in a toxic work environment, yes. and I'm I'm not saying everybody at this job was toxic. Um, I'm still in touch with a few of them, but there was a lot of that. Yeah. And um, I ended yeah. up falling victim to it. And uh Part of it is my fault because I had a short fuse, and uh, when I'm uh, when a horsefly buzzes around your head long enough, you're going to retaliate. And uh, I didn't retaliate physically, although I don't think it would have made any difference, you know. But but when you're uh, dealing with jobs, I'll let people come back who have been drunk on the job, or. Uh, high on the job or have stolen from the job when those people can get their jobs back. But I get cut, uh, terminated because I use profanity and, and uh, blew up at somebody and said some, yes, very harsh, vile things. But in the heat of the moment, a lot of us do that. And I'm like, I was never given an opportunity to, you know, take any sensitivity training or anything like that. But yeah, other people, who've done worse than that have i have some problems with that you know i was asking get your kindness well you know yeah well here's the thing my kindness was never was not appreciated because like i know there was especially during um the bug period (laughs) i won't uh you know um There was a lot of areas where people were in isolation and stuff. And I know there was one night, had I not stayed on, one of my coworkers would have been stuck in a situation that would have been way, way, way overwhelming. And I stayed on. And that was another double for me. And what breaks my heart is that um, looking back on it now, it's like, why did I give myself to these people, you know? It's like uh, one or two of them appreciate it, and uh, now it's like, yeah, I was a number. And um, I get this from my dad. My dad, if I, I wanna know, you want to know where I got my kindness from? My dad, because my dad yeah. always put other people first. When uh, he worked for uh, MB Tell for 30 years, and then after that, he couldn't stop. He went to work at the spring water plant that my grandfather operated and he because my dad was a workaholic. Um, but uh, any time somebody, a transport truck would show up to drop off coolers, you know, dad would always take a box of, of 24, four, uh, 500 milliliter bottles of water out, give it to the driver. No charge. That's- that was my dad. In the winter time, if we had a snowstorm, dad would get up at three in the morning and go plow people out, you know. He didn't charge a cent. What bothered me is when he passed away, like when he had ALS for eight years, I didn't see a lot of those people showing up. Now, wow. I saw my dad 
on uh, the morning before he passed and I got to say my piece and I knew that he was uh, a man of God and I know I know he's free of that illness now. And uh, there's days I yearn to be where he is because uh, 2023 has been a very, very, very trying year for me. I got hired at a job in Toronto, and um, I can't seem to get there because I love my cat. And um, that's the one barrier because – and then you go online, you look for apartments, and you get met with scammers. And I got met with three or four scammers. And yeah. luckily, I figured out how to counter them. I, I call the place in question, and it's always the same thing. No, this is not going on. And um, so I had people that were, were hoping I would get to Toronto and go to a Frightmare in the Falls this fall. But but uh, I haven't been able to, and I hope, I hope they're understanding there, and I'm hoping they'll keep that open. But luckily, I got a cleaning job that – I'm working at uh, pretty much overtime right now so that um, I can make ends meet. But, but you know, uh, Skittles was uh, my nephew's cat, and then he went to my parents, and my parents went to move into my grandparents' old house because of their illnesses, because mom has Parkinson's. Oh. They kept – they kept their Australian shepherd and dad told me to keep Skittles so I'd have company. But I think that uh, they knew I was a cat person. And so Skittles is uh, still with me. And, How long uh, is- huh? How long have you had Skittles? I've had Skittles. Let me see. He's been with me and only me since 2016. Oh, that was a very strong year for me. Yeah. Actually, I I remember because uh, mom's asked me this and I remember well because they moved into my grandparents' house because there was less stairs there. And uh, I stayed in the old house and my brother was going to fix it up so that they could be sold. And my nephew came and stayed uh, with me for a while. And um, but. Because I remember it was uh, February or the end of January 2016, they uh, they left because I, I remember what the first interview I did after that. And um, but I remember uh, Dad was the last one to leave, and he sat down. And he had some cereal, and we just just sat there and talked, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dad laughed, and and uh, it was just me there, and. Uh, I always joke with people and say, I was so bad. My parent, I, my parents couldn't get me to leave, so they had to leave first. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my childhood home for 47 and a half years, but technically well, Skittles was the last one to leave. Uh, you know me? When I was 18, everybody was running to move out of their houses mm-hmm. you know, and get away from their parents. I was like, I will never. Why? It's so nice here and Things are, I couldn't understand everybody's angst to get away from their parents. Mm-hmm. So when I was, I went to college and quite honestly, I never lived with my parents again. Yeah. And I else went back. I'm the only person who really never saw an issue with living with my parents. Um, but I never went back. And I think it's, well, that's about me. Do you want me to hear a funny little story how I got into acting? Yeah. You might not. I was, always wanted to be an actress as you well know Mm -hmm. my passion was there my whole life and uh so i went to college and i'm the fourth there was a lot of chaos stuff going on in my parents you know just in life busy moving to california father writing on comedy shows and stuff like that so everybody was very busy by the time i grew up and nobody really was talking about college so it was like the last thought to go to college and so i went to san francisco state I get in there and I don't know anybody and I'm, I'm actually rather shy. I'm not so shy now, but I was very shy. And um, about a year and a half into college, I come down to visit my family and there's an audition for days of our lives. And the audition was an under five uh, college student, but it was a regular. Mm -hmm. So I could either act a college student or be 
a college student. Mm -hmm. So that's, I dropped out of college and went to, did four years on um, leave, uh, Days of Our Lives. Isn't that funny? I don't, I don't blame you. I think it's hysterical. But it, but it was, you know, not the hugest. I mean, it got me and all the things I needed. It was a perfect job because it really was training me to be an actress. And I also was a waitress. I also, you know, I did other things to supplement. I mean, I worked so hard to get where I was going. And I know you do. And I see great things for you. And I see this podcast blowing up. And I don't see you cleaning anymore. You know what? Uh, I um I, here's my story. Um when I I had a hard time like growing up. Um I remember I was the only one between my two brothers and I who went to kindergarten. You know? Can you still hear me? I hear you, but my lower my lower power mode came on. Okay, because I can't see you right now, but that's okay. Oh, there now I can see you. But I was the only one that went to kindergarten, and I remember having a hard time leaving home, even to go to kindergarten. And, oh, I got to um, hear this, but then I'll tell you mine. Yeah, so I had a hard time, and uh, and going to grade one and two, I had attention deficit. Mm -hmm. I acted out a lot. And uh, I was one of these people. I didn't want to sit and listen to a teacher babble on about math and stuff I wasn't interested in. You know, I liked to go into the drive-in. I liked, uh, like, I saw the Star Wars trilogy at the drive-in. So we had all the action figures and uh, stuff like that. And I wanted to do stuff that enhanced my imagination. And school wasn't it. And I didn't like the idea of having to sit there and being told to do this and do that. And uh, I was very... This landed me in a lot of trouble growing up, you know, in terms of uh, I was deemed a bad student. But really, today they have medication and stuff, but they can help you with that. But back then it was a different story. And yeah. Um, yeah. And so when I got the I, ha I hated school, when I got the high school, Fredericton High here. Um, I was in one of the lower classes you know you had level one and two which were university and college bound students and you had level three which uh also uh could do some college and stuff and i did some level three in like english because i was good in that but i see and, that yeah but math and stuff like that i was horrible so i ended up doing level four which was for the um, people with learning disabilities. And then your level five was people who were handicapped. And I had a lot of insecurity about that because I was bullied and teased a lot. But looking back on it, it's funny how many people that took the university classes I see on welfare and how many people that were in level four who are working jobs today. I see it a lot, you know? I yep. agree with you. Sometimes I, they say... There, there's lots of studies that C students, A, B, C, D, F, um, C students are the, in the world achieve the most, not the A yep. student. It's the C students because they have to work harder. That's what yep. I've heard. Yeah. Uh, uh, my first year to call a uh, high school, uh, kindergarten, it's so funny. I was so used to um, a change. Mm -hmm. and ability i went to a catholic kindergarten and i arrive and i see all these kids crying and screaming to go home and mm -hmm. i am sitting why are they crying they're going to see their mothers in a minute what's the big deal and i'm trying to don't cry they won't hit you these little things they were swatting the kids hands and i just i mean i was like i could be like the perfect student but i was chatty and I was always trying to help people sit down. So I was called out for that. But I was okay about being away from home because I knew I'd go back. You always go home. Don't you know, my, you know, it's funny. Um, I was going to say, um, um, I always had a hard time 
leaving Fredericton. And I get homesick. I went uh, to some concerts. You know, I saw Avril Lavigne a couple times in concert in Moncton and St. John. And I saw Hilary Duff in St. John and I met her backstage. Wow. Going back, but when I was at the concert, I did fine. But I dreaded it up to the point because I was like, oh, I was going to have to get out of my comfort zone and leave Fredericton. So Lisa really, she put me on the spot when we, because she had moved back from California to Toronto in 2017. And when she was on my show the second time, we're talking about travel. And she asked what was stopping me. And I made every excuse in the book. Yeah. And she And she said, she made the offer that I could, if I wanted to come to Toronto, I could assist her at Horrorama. I knew class of 1984 since the 80s, and I was like, wow. I said, I loved Lisa, and I was like, I'd be foolish to turn that down. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad you didn't either. And I got you to Toronto, <laughs> and I, I – here's the weird thing. I met Lisa and her son at a restaurant, you know, and uh, – all the time, she's talking to me, asking questions about the Maritimes here. And the only thing going through my head is, why the hell am I not homesick? I like that. How weird is that? I still can't oh, figure I, it out. I'll tell you why. Because uh, you are with a like spirit, Lisa, and you are very dear friends. Mm -hmm. And when you get someone you really like, you know what I mean? And you're connecting, of course you're not going to be homesick. Of course, it's. I think it's more connection and people. It's not about a house. I can travel anywhere. I usually, after a few weeks or months, I miss my home because that's my comfort zone. But if I'm really connecting with people, like on Friday the 13th, um, or any series, when they end, it's really hard for me because I've connected with them. So I... There's a very funny video out there somewhere. It's a blooper reel that they did for the rap party for any day now mm -hmm. where I played. Have you ever seen that? Any of any day now? Nope. Okay. If you go on YouTube, it's really funny. I just found this out. You can look up TV series any day now and it pops up. I, I've never, I didn't see it when I was shooting it. I, I see it now, but anyway, I really loved it. And I played a Southern racist it, it's a great role because it was the civil rights it was from the 60s Lorraine Toussaint and Annie Potts I was Annie Potts's mother when she was little and then they aged me for when she was older and Annie Potts hysterically is like 10 years older than me but anyway I played her mother um so at the end I would talk like this my southern accent and say may I listen but don't you do that I love that character so there's a funny video that they went to each of the actors house like a month later and I was running around watering huge palm trees with a little watering can, like the perfect little sixties mom with aprons mm -hmm. offering people pie. Would you like some pie? And you hear my, my ex-husband and my children going, come on, mom. What? I didn't hear you. What did you say? And you're not Catherine mom. You're done with that role. How dare you try? You just go in there and your father will be home soon. He'll deal with you. Then father will come out. Come on, Nancy. The show's off. It was very funny. Do you, do you think Whitney and them played paintball up long after uh, Friday the 13th, part six? It was a shorter thing. I did the series for four <laughs> I did this for four years. I mean, that's a long time. Friday the 13th was tremendously difficult to end as well because we were so connected in coming to Georgia in this crappy little hotel. And when you do nights a lot, your mm -hmm. brain gets, so you come home at six in the morning, they would open this, not for me, but for the grips and stuff, well, for everybody. So we could dance and drink and stuff because that was our nighttime. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just too hard for me. I couldn't, I had to go to bed. But everybody would try to drag me out of the, motel it really was like a motel and go have fun and play with them because i was always enjoying them but they didn't realize i was married to the director and he had sleep <laughs> and i couldn't go out but it was fun
Yeah, I, I know. I, I love doing. Uh, I love sleeping during the day and <laughs> being out all night. That's just my thing. Not I everybody that, can do it. Yep. Not everybody can do it. I assure you, not everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. I I go walk walk bonkers bonkers bonkers. Mm -hmm. I do that. What time is it? Fine, sir. We could do this all night. No, oh, gee, it's uh, uh, twenty to nine. My right where it is here would be that's eight thirty. Okay, mm -hmm. so earlier it's four thirty. Yep. Okay, we have to wrap this up in ten minutes. I have a five o'clock appointment. Why? Um, <laughs> I have a billion more questions for you. Things I've never thought to ask. Um. Ask a few more. I have to. Yeah. Is there any film a little on your birthday and mix it together? Huh? Is there any way we could add more tomorrow morning on your birthday? Is there a way to cut it together? I don't know how to do that. We might look into that, but let me get a few more questions and before we I have to go. Um I just wish with all my might that everybody saw the integrity and brilliance I see in you. I don't How even see the integrity and brilliance in me. <laughs> I don't know how, how other people can. <laughs> how does it feel to take a sincere compliment that I'm offering you honestly? I think God made a wonderful creature. I think you're a wonderful light. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, but somebody that has had a lot of issues as I have, I don't get a lot of that. So it's always nice when I do hear it. And uh, there are times when I think I should receive it when uh, uh, instead I get cut off, which was what happened earlier this year. With <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. But those but, are the fools of the world. You know, you got to understand because quite honestly, Greg, life has not always been perfect for me. And I think you well know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've got to do is separate who we know God made us to be, who we are, and who they want to make us because they, yeah. don't they don't understand your light, your your goodness, because you're inherently good. I, uh, I mean, we all are a bucket. Right. We all have our issues. But I always enjoy talking to you. I always enjoy knowing more about you. Mm -hmm. I always do the best for you. I see you doing great things. And I wish I had a little magic wand. And I could make that happen. I think it was brilliant. Your um your bucket your, your uh the bucket challenge. Uh mm -hmm. your pine face challenge. That's what I mean to say. Mm -hmm. I thought that was brilliant. And your kindness for LOS, A -L -A -L -O -S. how do you pronounce it? ALS, but that was the ice bucket challenge. Uh, suicide and depression was the doubt yeah, fire face challenge. I'm so sorry. Please, I wish this could be edited. Um, your doubt fire challenge that I willingly took. I'm so sad I couldn't get the whole group together, but it still was fun. And well, look at 13 Fanboy. I mean, there are so many higher ups in that that not only did they not do it, but there are people involved in that that just made me into an absolute villain over it, you know? So, well, what you did, I think, is heroic. Mm -hmm. So, I want to speak to the hero that's turning 51 tomorrow, who's mm -hmm. lived wonderful years and has blessed 50 billions of people that you don't even know i have a quick question this is what i was thinking before do you ever go to class reunions no <laughs> i've um, never i've never seen one come up but oh. quite frankly i probably wouldn't i'll just have a class reunion with my kitty you know why i in high school was quite the hermit i never dated mm -hmm. people i mean there were so many rumors about me that I was a groupie, that I was a this, that I was that, all were lies. I was home either embroidering or or glittering or sequining. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, this is just funny. I was so naive that it was, you know, cause it was the 
late seventies when I was doing this, it's when people did a lot of embroidery on their jeans and stuff like that. I even made a jacket for my father with a sequined dragon on the back, hand sequined. And that's what I would do at nights. I wasn't going partying. I wasn't, but everybody thought I was this wild thing because I came up with this clothing. My dad wore it to work and when he was working on the uh, Tonight Show and with Johnny Carson, mm -hmm. Carson bought a jacket from me from this high school. And he had a, I forget his name, Paul something was his um, conductor. He bought a jacket from me way back then. But that's just a funny aside. But on my jeans, I didn't think this was weird. I thought my, the buttocks part of your jeans, I mm -hmm. put a hand, I embroidered a hand on each side and then I filled it with hearts and butterflies and all that. And I couldn't understand why guys kept slapping my butt. I was like, why are you hitting me? I didn't get the correlation. I was so naive. Mm -hmm. If you were that naive. Okay. So why I brought those silly things up is I go to my uh, 10 year reunion. I found out all those people had crushes on me. I went, why didn't anybody ask me out? <laughs> mm -hmm. you, I, there's a lot more people that love and respect you than you know. That is my bottom line point. I think a lot more people love and respect you. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I'm not feeling a whole lot of it, but you know what? You could be right, but maybe it's because I my first half of this year has been kind of down on me. You know, I'm not feeling too love and respected where I put myself out for people, but... but um, well, you got me to interview you. Yep. That's something. It's not yep. big, but it's something. It shows you you're seen. Lisa... You know what? This this is fun. This is this is something I enjoyed doing all year, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I mean, em the employment situation aside, you know, I mean, a year from now, it's going to be a different story. It is. You know, because I'm going to look back. Yep. I'm going to look back and it's going to be like, you know what? I'm in a better place, you know. I'm in a better I, place. I challenge us both to be in a way better place next year. Yep. I challenge us to let me re-interview you. And I have a feeling I'm going to be in a much better place and you're going to yeah. see it. Sure. And I believe, I don't know how, but I really do believe by next year, you're not going to have to have a side hustle unless you really enjoy it. Well, I know there's ways for you. I, I see you in so many things that you're passionate for. You so much passion and that you got this done. I mean, how many people do this? I don't care how much passion they have. They don't do it. You're I enjoy doing this. Yeah, I love doing this. And uh, And one of the things I try to do is I try to leave this open for anybody to be interviewed like like i had one of them i had somebody that i uh, had a former somebody i worked with at the hospital come on here I to know. do an interview and uh we didn't talk about the hospital she just had she had a side hustle and when she approached me about uh, some sale with it uh going on i was like okay uh, i never knew this side of you and everybody it's funny. everybody well, it's um, it's I only funny. well it's I funny only... because um when I got her on here it's like she just comes to life uh on camera and it's like I never saw this side of her at work. Greg, you know? I, I have two percent, it's gonna shut off. <laughs> did, <laughs> did I, can you see me? You can't see I me. I can't, right? no, I can't. Okay. Yeah, well we... we're gonna have to. It went down. I had to push it again. We're gonna have to finish this. Is that possible? You know what? Do you want to do this tomorrow? I'd rather. You know, I want then we'll, then we'll I want make a amount of time. Sure. We'll, we'll do a part two to this. Okay. I love you. Absolutely. Thank you. I love you too. Happy almost birthday to you. Happy almost birthday to you. 
And I will be all night sending prayers your way because this is going to be a good time. Well, I'll message you tonight and see what time tomorrow you want to do this. We'll figure it out, but I got to go. Okay. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Um, but text me and we'll figure out the second time. Sure. No problem. You deserve full attention. Thank you. Okay. How do you sign out? We got to sign out now. <laughs> Say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. You'd say your name and mention that I'm celebrating 51. Hi. This is Nancy McLaughlin on Greg Gilbert's Python Paradise. And he is celebrating his 51st birthday. And all of the minions out here celebrate with him. Wish him well and great blessings for the new year. Greg Gilbert's Paradise Python Radio. Zoom. Get it. You take care, Nancy. We'll do the second part of this. Very You're soon. Amen. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye.